Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to, now I want to say welcome to this Astro Chat episode, but I think I'm gonna say welcome to 2023 guys. Happy New Year. I hope you're having a lovely start to the new year. Me, I'm having, well, a bit of a slow start here on the channel. It's the 9th of January and I might edit this later in the week so I'll probably launch it a few days late as well so the channel is off to a slow start but I have been really very busy I've been doing lots of readings so thank you to all of those of you who have booked and are booked in the system I'm loving it I'm on track I'm on time and I'm, I've got energy I'm going to open up some more uh, spots as well so you will be able to get a spot no problem about that it is, as we know, a number seven year. Those of you who watch videos in the astrology community, you'll have seen many astrologers talk about the fact that it's a number seven year, it's ruled by Ketu, and so those of us on a spiritual path are going to really enjoy this year. Those of us who are light workers or doing any kind of spiritual or occult type work, any kind of coaching, psychology, psychotherapy, any of that, all of this, people are going to want to go within so if you're running this kind of practice it will grow this year right so you're going to be busy and it's amazing because I've seen that yeah I'm pretty busy this year like when I compare the time now to what it was like a year ago uh, I remember December January was pretty quiet actually and I've noticed that this year December January has been really busy I did take a few uh, days off though in between like sort of the Christmas period and um, the New Year period and I bought myself a new iPad look at these guys I've got an Apple pencil isn't that fancy my goodness this is just out of this this is blowing my mind I'm like oh my god the iPad that I had before was so old I'm just looking for it in this room but I'm just realizing it's not in this room um, was such an old iPad and it was chugging and it wasn't working and so this is like something from another planet and what I've done is I've put together all the charts of the royals right I've put it on here and I thought we could just talk about uh, the charts of the royals and I'll draw in real time on the screen and you'll be able to see what I think and let's see I'm just gonna make sure I'm recording the screen here sorry guys I'm new to this so I'm just figuring it out for the first time so let's see and I spent just most of today trying to figure out the technology of how this works so I've spent no time on the astrology so I'm really sorry what I'll do is I'll just I'll wing it yeah I'll just do it now and because uh, this is the only time I've got to do this so I'll learn how to be a good presenter drawing and speaking and not looking at the screen too much. Okay, so what am I going to call this episode? I want to call it something like your biography and your Rahu Ketu axis. And the title is going to be something like that. I don't want to draw attention to this video and put like, I was thinking about royals at war and I thought, nah. Um, but I, I want to call it your biography and your Rahu Ketu axis because this is a an important teaching principle about Rahu Ketu Axis. Now Ernst Wilhelm, who teaches this subject so beautifully, he's got a course which you can, um, you know, it's walled off, you have to log in, but I recommend go to his website, log in and find that course. It's called Healing Rahu Ketu Axis. It's very good. And in that course, he says, when you read someone's autobiography, he says, you will find it very difficult to avoid the Rahu Ketu axis of the person. You'll see it in that autobiography. And he also explained yeah, that someone would find it very difficult to write their autobiography and not write about the drama that's inherent in their Rahu Ketu axis. So we're gonna have a look at that and see with Prince Harry, how much of you know, what he's been writing about is, is here in this chart. Can we see it? Can we see his dramas here? And I'd say yes, absolutely. So if we take a look at his birth chart, uh, and if we start with Ketu, right? So I'm just going to draw here Ketu. All right, there we go. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. I just had to cut the video because I'm still learning how to use this. But I think 
I can do this now. So let's begin with the chart of Prince Harry. As I was saying, I think I'll cut out that earlier bit. Anyway, Rahu Ketu Axis, his biography. So we've got Ketu, okay? Where has he spent the majority of his time? He has spent the majority of his time so far in life in his Ketu house. Now, Ketu is quite operational up until, say, for example, 42 to 48, right? And then ideally, I mean, ideally at 42, you are living more and more out of the Rahu house. That's very ideal, okay? Because Ketu is a comfort zone. We don't want to live out of the Ketu house. That's not good for us. So with Prince Harry, his Ketu is in the 12th house and it's governed there by Scorpio, right? So the 12th house is prisons, right? Uh, it's hospitals, it's ashrams, it's foreign, faraway places, but it's places where you don't have to pay the bills, right? So, and it's where Venus is exalted and Venus doesn't like to work, okay? So it's really interesting that he's got his Ketu in the 12th house of and it, yeah, prisons, hospitals, palaces, right? He lives in a royal palace. Uh, Scorpio is here, so it's funded by other people's money. So this is absolutely perfect. Uh, so he spent the majority of his life here in, you know, the 12th house. But his destiny, his future, what it is that he's here to do, he's here to do all these kind of Rahu type things, right? So we've got here, Rahu in the sixth house in Taurus. So that's Rahu in the sixth house. The sixth house is, now the sixth house is courts, right? Uh, it's, it's a battlefield though. It's the battlefield, it's the world, it's ego as well. Um, what else is it? It's kind of the height of ego. But you know, a way of seeing this is that it is, um, it's the world. I'm going to say it's the world. He, part of his life purpose and what he is here to do is he is here to now create independent wealth. This is definitely a way that I read Rahu in Taurus. So you are meant to break away from the family uh, and not be so dependent on other people. You are meant to break away from the family and you are meant to create independent wealth. He's doing this out here in the world, right? Um, but it's interesting when we read world stage, you know, a couple of places where I read world stage are definitely here in the uh, seventh and yes, in the 10th as well. This is a place of, of the world stage. Uh, we can look at kind of this whole segment here as being, you know, public, right? Public, the world, you're out in the world, all that kind of things. So we can see that and his is all lit up there, that, that quadrant there. So he is definitely meant to uh, be out in the world, right? But we've got here Rahu, he is meant to as well, you know, say for example, create a family, uh, create independent wealth. So create his own family, create independent wealth for that family and to not be so reliant on the palace okay and this is really interesting that this is the palace because the lord here mars which is seated with ketu is also the lord of the fifth house of kingdom right so we've definitely we can definitely see just through rahu ketu axis alone we can see quite a chunk of his life story and what he is here to do okay so we can definitely see that one thing that's pretty interesting that I've been looking at with this chart is um, the seventh house. Okay, so the seventh house is the other. And it's really interesting with Prince Harry that the Lord of the house of the other is Mercury, right? And Mercury is seated here in the ninth house. So what can we say and see here? Well, I'm going to interpret this. So Lord of the seventh is seated in the ninth. And what do we have going on here in the ninth? We have Leo and we have the sun here as well. So it's like he wants 
the other person to see him as a king. Okay, because this is this is classic king type stuff right here, isn't it? You know, I mean, we've got a Leo son here. And this is not just any Leo son. This is a Leo son in the ninth house. It's in a fiery place. So we've got Leo in the ninth house of authority. So I'd say he wants other people to see him as a king. And I think he wants to be the ultimate authority of his family. But it looks like, I mean, he wants to be the ultimate authority of his family, full stop. I mean, he, he wants to be... He wants to be in charge, which is so fascinating. We can really see that here in this chart. What has activated all this? What has brought all of this about? Because he wasn't like this before, when? Before he got married, right? So what's, what's that all about? So we've got Venus here. Venus in a man's chart is his wife. And as soon as he marries Meghan Markle, this becomes active here. Tenth house, well, and this as well. Yeah, good. I'm glad I'm drawing down there. So we've got all of this active here. So he marries Meghan Markle. Now she's Venus. She's in the tenth house. So who is she? She's in the tenth house. She's the boss, right? And we'll have a look at some further charts and you'll see that she's definitely the boss. She's in charge. So he marries, he gets married. And that's very different to when he was dating. When he was dating, this was active. This here, which was the um, fifth house of, of dating, romance. You know, he had these kind of moon-like relationships, I suppose, moon-like as in they didn't last, did they? You know, uh, Venus though, this relationship has activated a whole load of different things in his chart. So this is really, really interesting. He is married and it's through being married that he realizes that, he, that, that people are not seeing him as a king. It's like she makes him aware that, hey, you're not being seen as a king, but you actually really deserve it, right? That's kind of what I think is, is going on here. Um, what else have we got going on here? So, well, the brother, that is fascinating. All right, so the brother, let's take a look at this as well, because this, this links into Venus as well. Uh, now, the other thing is that Venus is debilitated. Let, why don't we talk about that? Yeah, Venus is debilitated. So partner is going to be someone who has has most probably now this doesn't always happen because i've done a lot of readings for you guys and some of you have debilitated venus and you married your first sweetheart and you don't have any of this but there are lots of cases and i've covered this in the clive james masters episode lots of cases where debilitated venus you will get a partner who has been married before you'll get a partner who has kids with other children um, you'll get a partner who you know uh, yeah they're, they're you're not their first person kind of thing so so you will see that and we have that here with um with prince harry the other thing is that his dad prince king charles sorry i keep calling him prince charles um King Charles, he has a debilitated Venus as well. And it's really interesting that I think the book does cover the fact that the children said, oh, please don't marry Camilla. And with Harry, we've got the same thing. Family is like, please don't marry this lady, right? So we've got that here. This is that Venus in Virgo kind of thing. Your family might not approve of your partner. That's a big thing that can happen here with this placement. Yeah, I have seen that. Uh, numerous times because there'll be something it's like people will consider that you're there's something wrong with your partner you know even that even if they're really nice or not or what you know um, people will consider that your partner is something not right with your partner they'll consider that 
what else do we have? So what's really interesting as well is I think so Venus is making it apparent is, is really calling attention, as I said, to this king type stuff that's going on here. But interestingly, she's the lord of the 11th house of siblings. Okay, that's interesting because it's, it's almost like through his wife's eyes, he has reevaluated his relationship with his older sibling. Okay, so he's looking at Saturn in a new way, All right? Whoops. Sorry, I've just totally messed that up. There we go. Okay, I'm still getting used to this. <laughs> right, let me scribble that out. Now, what was I saying here? I was saying that Venus, Venus is the Lord of this 11th house here. So what can we say here? Yeah, it's like through the eyes of his wife, he is seeing the relationship with his brother in a completely new way. So it's like he had to marry for all this stuff to be initiated is kind of what I'm seeing here. Um, I'll have a look at the time. We're doing okay. We want to get through some of the other charts as well. Mm, let me just see what else do I want to say about this. I'll cover this other point as well, which is to say, uh, yes, Ketu Lord is in the Ketu house, right? We've got, whoops, we got Mars here. Don't worry, I'll get better at this, guys. Um, we've got Mars here, right? In the 12th. Ketu Lord seated in the same house as Ketu. Why is this so important? This is massively important. We've also got Brigabindu point here as well. Okay, Brigabindu point is the midpoint between the moon and Rahu. So Brigabindu point is seated right here in the 12th. That's a destiny point. So what I'm going to say here about this Lord of Ketu seated in the 12th and Brigabindu point. I think he'll have to go home at some point. I think he'll be able to enjoy this time out and about here in the in the world. He's out and about. He's here in the world. But now I don't know exactly when um, he'll return to England, but I think he'll return to England. I think that's part of this chart. Yeah, and that's because of Brigabindu point and Ketu's Lord is here with Ketu. And I compare that to my chart because with my chart, I've got two Lords. I've got my Ketu Lord with Rahu. I've got Rahu Lord with Rahu. So I need to be out in the world, you know, and I've had a 12 from transit that has brought me here to Sydney for three years. But I think possibly with my destiny. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would, for example, retire in Australia. I don't know. And I, I have plans about that. I think that would be really cool. There are beautiful places to live here. Like I think about that. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to retire in Cairns or something? That's where everyone retires, right? But I don't know. Maybe I won't because my chart doesn't particularly support it. Whereas Prince Harry's chart supports him ultimately going home. Now, is that in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years? I don't know. I mean, I could probably find out. <laughs> I could probably sit down and study it and have a good go at um, determining when that is. But I've definitely got the idea here that, you know, I think he, uh, I think he will return home. All right, let's take a look, quick look at this. So we've got to check the time, 14 minutes. We're okay. Um, Prince Harry, D9 chart. Yes, I thought I'd bring this one up just to say that I think he knows Meghan Markle from past life. We've got um, K2 conjunct Venus, right? He knows her from a past life. Uh, and I think she's definitely, look at this, she's a total boss, isn't she? She's got exalted um, Capricorn, uh, exalted Mars here in Capricorn, right? So she's definitely a boss type. We've also got here Saturn seated in the seventh. Again, more boss energy, right? And this suits perfectly. Oh, well, again, you know, this Jupiter in uh, the 10th house again, and, and let's not forget this is Prince Harry as well. This is who he is too, right? And he's demonstrating that through calling his book spare and, you know, there's resentment here. He's like, well, I should be, 
you know, I should be the one, right? Is that is that what's going on? So uh, we've got Jupiter in the in the tenth, right? That's another item here. Oh, it's all a bit messy. Let's let's scribble that out. But yeah, Jupiter Jupiter in the tenth, right? That's another boss type placement where you know everything. Nobody can tell you what to do. So that is both Prince Harry. That's his deep internal self that he probably doesn't talk about to too many people. Uh, and, and this is his wife. This is who he's going to marry, right? And grow into. And it's really interesting. I was watching a channel um, on YouTube, and this is a lady who reviews handbags, right? So this is not astrology content at all. And she was saying that she was saying, "Do you think it's weird that I I feel like I'm growing into my husband? I'm becoming my husband, right? So that is a D nine thing. And when I heard her say that, I was like, yes, she's just she's just described D nine." It's exactly what happens. So if we take a look at Meghan Markle, let's take a look at her. I've spoken about her on the channel before and I have said that it would suit her to become a private individual. And I say that because Rahu is here in Cancer in the first house. So that's one of the things I've said before. But in terms of this boss type energy, where is that? Well, that is absolutely here, right? So her biography is playing out here. We can see it. It's playing out on the world stage. We've got Ketu in Capricorn in the seventh house. That is some serious boss energy right there. And you'll, you'll have seen it at the wedding day. And it's come out recently that she was content to walk herself down the aisle. Isn't that fascinating? And that is not like a Rahu in the seventh. Rahu in the seventh is scared to get married. Okay, we're going to see that come up in a moment when we look at Prince William. Rahu in the seventh, they don't want to get married. They're, they're, they're scared about it. They're, and Rahu in the seventh is the kind of person that, okay, I'll sign a contract if there's definitely a way for me to get out. They'll only sign a contract if they can absolutely get out of it. Whereas what we've got here, Keith Wing Capricorn in the seventh, she's got big, like sort of, yeah, she's got boss energy, right? She's in charge. And um, this is Capricorn. It, it's interesting. We've got Saturn here in the seventh, which is similar to Prince Harry's D9. As I said, we've got this Saturn here, right? So she's got the Saturn energy there in, in the seventh and she's in charge. We can see that here in this chart. Uh, it would suit her, as I say, to be a private individual, you know, to come and, and be here be a private individual, to uh, not be so, um, not be so take charge, I think. Um, it's really interesting. But when, when she, as I said, on her wedding day, she was walking down the aisle. What I was amazed at, I did watch that, and um, I was amazed at how confident she was. It, it was just that, that was amazing to watch. When you watch, by contrast, Kate Middleton, she was so nervous, Kate, she could barely speak, you know, and um, we can see the confidence here. We can see where that's coming from. It's definitely coming from this Ketu. Ketu is confident to be married lo and loves to be married as well. I've read a lot of charts for people who've got Ketu in the seventh and some of the people I've read charts for, they are married. So it doesn't mean you don't get married. Some people think that. Some people think, oh, Ketu in the seventh, you're not going to get married. No, you're actually very comfortable being married. And it doesn't serve you in this lifetime. You're not going to get your spiritual growth from being married. You're going to get your spiritual growth from being an independent individual and learning how to do that. Uh, so... Yeah, this, this chart is, is really quite fascinating here. The other thing that I thought was pretty interesting in this chart as well is, um, now let's see, this aspect here, right? We've got Mars aspect on to, so fourth aspect, uh, onto the third house. And this is a very frustrated and unsettled energy. Mars, not the best in the 12th. You know, this is where Venus is exalted, so Mars is frustrated here. Mars is being lauded by uh, Mercury as well. Not ideal again. 
So we've got a very frustrated energy. And I think this is where possibly the stirring comes from or the... Um, Yeah, definitely. I think some of, some of the stirring maybe that, that she might be doing. I'm not accusing anyone of stirring, but like, um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Let's have a look at a couple more charts here. So, well, can we see Prince Harry in here? Well, we do have a confirmation of the past life connection here. We've got a um, K2 uh, Mars here in Pisces, right, which is very similar to Prince Harry's K to Mars in the 12th. So we've got this signature in here. And we've got this Rahu Venus here in the third. Definitely there's something like very public about relationship. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here with the Mars energy going into the third house. Like there's this kind of stirring or like the, you know we have to do something it's like no you don't always have to do something you don't always have to keep putting out media articles or yeah there's a little bit of um there's a restless energy going into the third house here third house of communication image uh media thinking you always have to do something you always have to be in the press there is that kind of thing here it's an unsettled energy of, you know, got to be in the press, got to be seen. These are both lauded by Mercury, right? And this wanting to be seen thing, I mean, this is very kind of Rahu's son, right? This is Rahu's son. This is like in the first house. That is a big ego type of placement there as well. And interestingly, we do have a royal regal sort of a thing going on here with uh, Venus in the in the, the second in Leo right so there there is a royal wedding there let's take a look at Prince William how are we doing on time we're running out of time well this ended up being a long video well maybe we'll just finish with him because I think we do have Princess Diana and yeah we got more we've got more charts but I think we'll, we'll finish with William how about we do that so I don't go on too long uh, as I said, look at that, Rahu in the seventh house. This is someone who's nervous to get married, right? He doesn't want to do that. <laughs> why? Why did, why did he not want to do that? Rahu in the seventh doesn't, is nervous about commitment. I've seen this so many times and I've got so many friends as well who are Rahu in the seventh people and they, yeah, they'll get married, but they'll keep the finances separate. They'll keep the, you know, and they're, they're, they're pretty happy to be apart from the part. Like, you can have that country, I'll have this country. Yeah, Rahu in the seventh is okay with that. What I was interested in here is, um, I was definitely interested in this. So this is, whoops, that's probably not going to come up. Here we go, this. This is the third house. And who's the third lord? Well, it's Saturn. Look at that, and where Saturn seated. So the third Lord, younger brother, here in the 10th house of world stage. And where is all this playing out? Well, this is fascinating. This is in Virgo, okay? And this is, Virgo is where you draw the line. In, 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 in Virgo, the lessons will be about drawing the line it will also be about, so you'll have to draw the line with someone. You might also have to forgive someone. So I think what I'm seeing here is someone who will have to do both. He's going to have to draw the line with younger brother, right? Uh, he's going to have to draw the line with younger brother and he's going to have to and look at that. I mean, we've got a fight here. We've got Mars. We've got Mars in the 10th house. So we've got Mars in the 10th with the younger brother. There's a fight here. And where is it happening? It's happening on the, and where is it happening? It's happening on the world stage, right? This fight is playing out on the world stage of, uh, where, where you everyone's seeing everything. Yeah. 
So he's going to have to draw a line with the brother, with the younger brother. Isn't that fascinating? It's absolutely amazing. The other things about this chart here is that what would his advice have been in terms of getting married? Now we've got Saturn's uh, aspect here on the so 10th aspect on the seventh house of marriage, right? So this is someone who will take a lot of time to get married himself, which he did. He took a lot of time. Uh, and I think if he's advising anyone about matters of marriage, he would say, go slow. Definitely. So I think that's what the fight was about. I think the fight was you know, when he beat up his brother or whatever, right? And, and of course, so Harry writes, oh, I didn't hit back. Well, I think you're, you know, sending a few punches through this book, right? Which he is doing. But let's get back to the topic. So, so the advice would have been go slow. I don't think the advice would have been get rid of her. I don't think so. This is a person who goes slow in relationships. The other thing that we've got here and I don't know if he's, um, you know, nurturing this or making this happen. Maybe not likely, but William definitely has a bit of a psychic gift here with this uh, sun moon combination. It's a new moon there in the seventh house. So he's got an ability to really read a person. He's good at that. You can trust what he has to say and what he sees in someone. This is definitely a psychic gift. I have seen this. Uh, in the charts of people who are very psychic and can, can read another person. Yeah, the third eye is incredible. So I don't know if he, you know, some people, they have these things, but they don't believe in it and they don't use it or nurture it or connect with it or any of that. So then it doesn't function, right? But um, he, he's got that kind, of, that kind of gift. And I'm just trying to think what else I wanted to say. There were other charts, guys. There were other things I wanted to say. For example, I wanted to say here, I mean, with Princess Diana, gosh, look at that. We've got, she had to fight the establishment. We can see that in this chart. Is this Prince Harry's work to do in the world? I, I don't think so. We can see it in this chart, but I, I don't think uh, it's, it's Harry's work to do. And what I actually think, is that this whole thing is actually a setup to um, like a, a divine spiritual setup that was orchestrated before um, everyone was born. And I think some of these big events were agreed before birth. And I actually think that Harry agreed to have this very public fight. Look at that. We've got a public fight here. It's destined. It's in the chart. So I think that this is agreed before birth and this whole thing is actually making Prince William look very good and his popularity is increasing and his, you know, um, people are really loving him. And I think if we look back to uh, Prince Harry's chart, you'll see older brother, right? Exalted. So this is an older brother and look at that older brother is casting aspect onto his ascendant. So Prince Harry has always felt limited by his older brother. He's all, always possibly felt like he can't be his full self in front of his brother. Um, but this is an exalted Saturn and it's a tough love Saturn. And I think the punch that he gave, you know, it's, it's brotherly love. You know, it's just, it's just the fact that this is operating. He can literally see, right? <laughs> With that new moon combination in the seventh house, he can see that I can look a little bit down the line here and I can tell you, you don't want to do this. But I actually think the thing that he's saying you don't want to do, which is, you know, marry Meghan Markle, that whole thing is actually, I think, going to bring sort of popularity to these people and it's, it's bringing Prince William up already. So it's, it's been really interesting to watch all of this unfold. 
But guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. I have enjoyed using this thing so much. I'm going to see how the video works when I put all of this together and I'll get better at using it as well um, over time. So but yeah, I just wanted to more than talk about these charts. I actually just wanted to test this technology today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.